What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and for today I wanted to do another character review for you guys. For this one we're going to be taking a look at Yuli's Claw, one of the new characters that we got as a part of update 3.8. Now I gotta be completely honest with you guys here, I was not very excited for this guy when I saw that he was coming to this game because of the fact that in all of the comic books that he's ever been featured in, in all of the TV series that I've ever seen him featured in, he's never been very good or very powerful. He's simply just a crafty character that conveniently gets himself into situations and whenever he's up against any real powerhouse, he generally just gets stomped out. However, in this game, it looks as though he's actually going to be a decent character. I was actually expecting him to come to this game and just kind of fade into the background with someone like Whiplash, where he's conveniently useful in certain situations. However, he looks as though he's gonna be able to hold his own because of the fact that he's actually got a pretty good kit. Very surprised that Netmarble actually invested so much in someone as, I would say, insignificant as Claw, not really saying he's that insignificant, but when you take a look at the fact that we have characters like War Machine, Hawkeye, and other members of like the Avengers that are still to this day complete garbage, I was not expecting Claw to be this good. However, he's actually a solid pickup, guys. He's someone that if you're in need of a super villain for Shadowland, he's gonna be able to hold it down for you there. If you need a solo for War Boss, he's also your guy for that. If you need someone to work as a support character, he can also do that once you get him to tier two. And based on how his kit is designed, he may actually be able to break 100k for you in Extreme AB. I'm not telling you to use him in Extreme AB because you have better options. I'm just simply saying that he may actually be able to do it. And this is something I never even imagined when I saw that he was coming to the game. So a very good kit overall. And we'll touch on both the negatives and the positives of the character in this video. Now, one thing you got to know is if you take a look at his tier one passive right here, the four star passive, you will see that he has marketing skill which gives him critical damage increase by 30%. If you get him to tier two, this actually gets applied to all of your allies. And this is actually half of Warwolf's tier two passive. This is actually very good because even if you're not using him as your main character, you can use him to actually scale up the damage of the character that you're currently using. And when compared to someone like Warwolf, which is only really known and loved for one, his tier two passive and his five skill, Claw is significantly better because Claw can hold it down on his own. He can give you a solo in Shadowland, he can give you a solo in World Boss, and like I said, he could potentially be clearing ABX for you. Warwolf cannot do any of those three things on his own. So definitely something to consider if you're still building Warwolf. You might want to decide to build Claw instead simply because he's just going to be overall more useful. That's just my personal opinion. If I was in that situation, that's what I would do. I would build Claw first. That's just my opinion. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the skills and then we can talk some more. So in his kit, he actually has two iframes and these are gonna be your go-to skills if you wanna get the most out of the character. The first one is actually on the five skill here and I absolutely love the fact that he gets a car and he's literally just hanging out the window and shooting up the place. It's the highest damaging skill in his kit. So you wanna make sure that you use this thing off cooldown. The next one is actually on the four skill. It's a short iframe. However, it does respectable damage and it's something you're gonna to wanna to use pretty often. One downside of this skill is that it has pretty non-existent tracking. What I mean by that is if the enemy moves after you hit this skill, the car, rather the bus, is not gonna chase them. The enemy that's inside the bus will still try to hit those enemies, but if they move away from the bus after, you summon the bus, it's not gonna drive and try to track them down. It's literally gonna drive in a straight line and in most cases, it's just gonna miss. So that's kind of one big downside of this skill. The enemy has to kind of be stationary when you use it to get the full damage behind it. You're still gonna get some damage because there's a minion inside the bus that's actually throwing out explosives. So definitely still a pretty convenient and useful skill to use besides just using it for the iframe. 
Another thing in this kit is actually the fact that he gets a guard and a very good guard at that. It's a premium guard as you can see right here. It actually comes with eight hits for eight seconds. I was not expecting this, so I'm very happy. I was expecting something with five hits for five seconds. Very happy with this. However, the summons that he gets here are pretty weak. Not gonna lie, there's only three summons and they only have 65% of his stats. So they're not gonna really do too much besides just taking aggro. However, this is still a skill that you should prioritize off cooldown. Another thing about his kit, he also has a stun right here. The only stun in his kit is on the one skill. However, both the one and the two skills are very, very risky skill because they root him in place. So you want to be very, very careful when you use it. Otherwise, you're going to find that you take a good bit of damage. And these two skills are potentially going to be the reason why you fail or die with him. So be very careful. The only skills that you should really be using are the five, the four, and the three. Another thing that's pretty bad about his kit is the fact that he gets this really, like it's better than normal because generally they give like 6% for critical rates. So it's not terrible, but it's still not very good. However, for someone like Claw, it's better than you can expect, right? Tier 2 passive is actually very freaking good. I was not expecting him to get something like this, like Ignore Dodge, which is great. That's premium these days. He gets another 35% on top of the fact that he's already getting 30 here. So that's 65% critical damage in this man's kid. He's gonna be overflowing with critical damage for the majority of people. So that's pretty insane. As you can see, he also gives himself some guaranteed critical rate. This tier two passive is better than what a lot of the more popular characters in this game get. It's actually insane that they gave this good a tier two passive to someone as insignificant as Claw. However, this is a very, very good tier two passive, and this is actually going to bump up his DPS, which at tier one is kind of like mid-tier, significantly higher once you get into tier two with this tier two passive, for sure, for sure. I was not expecting him to be anywhere near being this good that I'm actually seriously contemplating tier twoing the guy just to find out just how much powerful he becomes. Because at tier one, I've been having fun with him and he's pretty pretty decent. I'm actually very, very surprised. When it comes to a skill rotation with this guy, you generally want to open with the five, then go into the four. And after that, you want to put up the three, then use the one for the stun and then use the two if you have to. But generally, if you have max skill cooldown, you don't even need to use the two. For me, generally, I just go five into four, into three, into one, and then right back into five. But if you don't have max skill cooldown, you can definitely throw in the two right after the stun and then go into the five. When it comes to an ISO set for this guy, to be honest with you, the only ISO set that you want with him is actually going to be Power of Angry Hulk and not Overdrive. I was actually very sad in this case that I actually ended up with Overdrive. When I'm trying to roll for Overdrive for my characters, I can't get it for the life of me. However, for this guy, I somehow miraculously ended up with it within spending 5 million gold. Still a lot of gold, but I was really, really hoping that I would get freaking um, Power of Angry Hulk instead. And the reason why is because he gets critical damage here. And like I said earlier, he gets 65% critical damage in his kit. That is a lot. That is a lot. So if you take a look at the fact that he's still at tier one and I have 189% for critical damage, once I get into tier two, I'm gonna be over by damn near 20%. So I'm strongly considering re-rolling Overdrive for the first time in the history of like ever. I don't think anyone else ever even considers this, but yeah, literally I'm at the point right now where I'm thinking if I wanna optimize this guy, I may actually need to re-roll him and give him power of angry hope. Never thought I would see the day. But if you take a look at his stats right here, I barely have him built up. And he has almost max critical damage, almost max critical rate. Attack speed is the only thing that I'm really missing a significant amount of. As you can see, I'm missing 19% there. And I'm missing 9% for ignore defense. And we have 50% reduced cooldown duration. If you take a look at the gears, you'll see for yourself. They're at 17 and 16. Barely 
barely been touched but take a look at the freaking stats guys he's built in such a way where it's so easy to max him out i'm actually so surprised that they made him such a really like i would say stat heavy character like he's heavy with really good stats as you can see right here energy attack ignore defense all attack this one right here the physical defense is bad but he gets skill cooldown and all defense he gets attack speed critical damage hp right here he gets critical rate again like very 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 good stats built into his kit so when i actually get these gears to 20 i'm literally only gonna have to give him a little bit more ignore defense if i don't already fix my cards and potentially some critical rate and attack speed so very very good kit on this guy so for any of you guys who are a big fan of claw you should be very happy with his kit overall because i still don't have an obelisk for him yet you can see just how easy the character is to build. I literally build him within seconds and he was like, wow, wowing me guys, wowing me in the different game modes. So for any of you guys who like the character, go ahead and make sure that you actually give him some love because he's worth it. The summons are one of the weak points of his kit because of the fact that they're only gonna have 65% of his stats, so they're gonna die pretty easy and they're not gonna do that much damage. However, he's still a really good character, guys. Believe me, I'm gonna give you guys some gameplay with him right here on one of the early floors in Shadowlands since that's where I am right now. But best believe he can do way more than this and I will definitely be giving you guys more in the days and weeks to come. All right, Claw, let's do this. It's a drive-by. They don't want it. And the summons don't do anything in here because they're combat types. So you literally just put them up for um, a distraction. See that nasty pull on the on the on the fire skill right there? Just literally pull them and threw them into a corner. Listen, Cap, I have a guard. What are you saying, bro? You got damage block? Hold this. Like it's so funny to watch this guy in the back of the truck, just like <laughs> he's coming out, just throwing out those grenades out of the back of the truck. Chill. Like I love watching it, but sometimes because of the position that he gets spawned in, you can't really get to see it. I'm gonna enjoy it one last time. This <laughs> guy just chucking grenades out of the back of the truck. And there you guys have it, man. Claw review. Let me know what you guys have been personally experiencing with this guy. I honestly think that he's a great character. Very, very surprised. Like seriously, he's actually so much fun to play. Never really expected him to be like this good and this much fun for me to play. He's very easy to play too, as you guys can see. I barely had to try here, didn't get damage, and I cleared it in a minute 05. So that's all I have to share for this one, guys. Like always, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know what you guys wanna see next, man. And that's it for this one. Peace out.